You see, it's often just a misunderstanding of the scale of the problem. For the lunch that's served after this service, a Christmas lunch to which everyone is invited, an order for food was placed from the church, as you might expect, with a well-known supermarket. The delivery was due here at the church yesterday, so with great anticipation, each item was checked off the list. Potatoes, carrots, nut roast, turkey, and sprouts. Nine and a half kilos of sprouts. But wait, the order wasn't quite what was needed. Instead of nine and a half kilos of sprouts, what was delivered was nine sprouts. <laughs> Actual sprouts, costing 27 pence. Well, actually, not nine, because the order had been read as nine and a half actual sprouts, and I don't suppose anyone felt like halving a sprout to go in the delivery van. The order had been rounded up to 10. <laughs> so there were in a bag 10 actual sprouts which won't feed, well, me as a Sprout fan, <laughs> let alone a hundred or more people later today. Veteran Christmas lunch organizers that the St. James's team is, no one panicked, but further supplies were bought, and I can report to you, faithful congregation, that there are enough Sprouts for everyone. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to make a mistake over a matter of scale. The Christmas rituals can be so familiar, so set, it can be hard to remember the awesome revelation at the heart of it. In the technical church language, it's called incarnation. God who is spirit becomes flesh, becomes human. God is made human. Jesus is born as a child, and in this sense we can say Jesus is God's body language. And what Christmas means, what incarnation means, is that our human limitations are laid bare because what we have assumed is separate, God reveals as one. Matter and spirit were never to be separated. Heaven is close to earth. Body is filled with soul. Incarnation, that the power of God is poured into the world in a vulnerable, fleshly child, the consequences of that are awesome. We humans make constant category errors. The only way we can understand the world, it seems, is that we are separate from them and they are not us. We necessarily categorize, separate, name, and define. And in doing so, we create an artificial distance between different categories of human, between humans and creation, between humans and God. This sort of defined separation is the whole underpinning philosophy of our party political system, a system in a mature democracy that has huge benefits, of course, but many flaws. Half the world's population will be taking part in a general election next year in 2024. Half the world's population. And so we can hear it now. Parties are looking for defining what they call clear blue water between them, so there is a defined and separating choice. Polarities can help us understand the world by understanding what we are not. But Christmas, the awesome revelation of Christmas, is that this is artificial because the paradox that God is utterly other, utterly holy, and yet is with us, within us, beside us, not only beyond us, what we humans assume is separate is revealed by God to be one. But all of this can just sound like intellectual gymnastics, philosophical wordplay, which in the end is also a mixture of distraction and acquiescence to putting it all in the frankly too difficult pile. But what if it weren't too difficult? What if it was simple? As simple as a slogan. I've been thinking about slogans recently because that 2024 year 
is one where half the world's population will be voting. The democracies of India, the United States and the UK, among many others, will hold general elections. Huge numbers of people will exercise their agency, their power, their right to vote. I'm reminded of Archbishop Desmond Tutu whenever I talk about general elections from the pulpit or this lectern. I'm reminded of Archbishop Desmond Tutu who said, when people say religion and politics don't mix, I wonder which Bible it is that they're reading. But I wonder if there's a different sort of political that we're invited into by the awesome incarnation. The incarnate God, the possibility, the hint, the clue that God is present in the world, not remotely waving from heaven, but in the messy, contingent, grief-stricken world that we celebrate Christmas in today, makes politics not just possible, but necessary. But underpinned by the spirituality of God with us, that will, in opposing any particular policy or point of view, a vested interest or a violent system, which must be done, of course, will still refuse to judge or exclude, but will be practical and political in a way that invites deeper unity and understanding in the end. Because what we humans assume to be separate, God reveals to be one. The incarnation, God with us, not just some of us, but all of us, for all time, everywhere. The simplicity and power of this festival has monumental consequences. We are not alone. We are not abandoned. Human beings are precious and mysterious and made in the image of God, but are ourselves not the beginning and end of everything that happens. You and I have a soul. You and I are people from whom, in Rowan Williams' beautiful phrase, we are people from whom God cannot bear to be parted. If I say the slogan, God is with us, most people might think that's too general, not political enough, or waffle that doesn't land with people or mean anything real. This isn't a reflection on the power of the truth of that, but an indictment of our human inability to live it out. A weak interpretation of the incarnation has also led to the anesthetizing of whole societies against the awesome possibility that God is in all things and everyone, south, north, west and east, rich and poor and everyone in between. God in all things for all time, every creature, every plant, every microscopic material thing forever and always connected deeply in God. This Christmas, the message of incarnation is urgent. St. Teresa of Avila encouraged us in the light of the incarnation. Christ has no body now on earth, but yours. No hands, but yours. No feet, but yours. Yours are the eyes through which to look out Christ's love to the world. Yours are the feet with which Christ goes about doing good. Yours are the hands with which Christ blesses us. The shadow of the cross falls across the cradle at Christmas. Knowledge of the climate emergency convicts our consumerist addiction to tinsel and single-use plastic. The rubble of Gaza has buried thousands of children born close to Bethlehem. The agony of families waiting for news of kidnapped loved ones. The millions displaced in Sudan and a hundred other countries beside point to the Holy Family as we read in the Gospels a precariously housed Jewish refugee family fleeing before their child turns two. Christmas is emphatically not 
about enforced jollity or pressure to be on form, but an equal assurance that in celebrating the incarnation, there is, in the words of that old carol, comfort and joy. That is possible when the ancient wisdom of scripture bursts into life with the shocking gospel that God is with us. There's a being swept up in it all about Christmas, not allowing ourselves to be distracted by or obsessed with the consumerism, but placing ourselves in the way of this story in front of us in these nativity figures carved from a tree that stood on Piccadilly for a hundred years. Placing ourselves in the way of this story, knowing that the presence and love of the divine being has been unalterably, unalterably and irresistibly poured out into the world that was hurting so much then and is hurting now. The way that God's love is poured out is into a bloodied, thin-skinned child whose very presence made grown adults, even wise ones, fall to their knees in wonder and pray and cry in relief and give of what they had. Let us pledge to take the incarnation seriously. God in all things and all people, without exception. Without exception. Let us pl pledge to resist making category errors that they, whoever they are, are not like us and we are not like them. God has revealed that what we assume is separate is whole. The balance is hard and life is hard for so many people this Christmas. But this festival teaches us a truth that the North African theologian Augustine made into a powerful slogan that I will carry with me through this next election year. Without God, we cannot, but without us, God will not. Amen.